Hey folks, Armin Hammer here, and I recently had the opportunity to have a conversation with Danny Lopez, who owns CrossFit Soul in Miami. Now, Danny has coached a bunch of really high-level athletes, including Brenda Castro and Team Soul, which has taken top 10 at the CrossFit Games twice. On top of that, he's run a successful affiliate for many years, been involved with a whole lot of other businesses within the CrossFit space, and he's got a lot of interesting ideas about what's going on with CrossFit, how CrossFit Health is going to be affecting the affiliates, and just where there is hope for all these new CrossFit Games changes. Check out this longer conversation, let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys next time. Danny, I think uh, I think something that was really interesting to me uh, early on was the one of the very first people I talked to after all this game stuff was announced was you. Uh, mm-hmm. And you've never been one to hide your opinion on things. Um, you know, and I think you and I had our, our very similar first blush, which was that this thing was going to be a disaster, like absolutely terrible idea. Um, and I think a big part of that was because of how unknown it was. So now that we kind of know a little bit more, we, don't, we still don't know a lot, but now that we know a little bit more, what do you, what do you think? Do you still think that it's kind of a weird move and, and not the best move or, or have you changed your mind on that? Um, so I definitely think it's weird. I, I still think it's weird. I, I think that the communication of it, um, it's just weird. And I think that I, I I hate to not find a better term for my opinion on it, but like, I can't say it's bad because, uh, change is not bad and I haven't seen really what the rollout is going to be. So I, I can't have that opinion. I can't have the opinion that it's good. Um, I just think it's it's just, it's just very different and and weird. It's not very consistent with how HQ has communicated uh, over the past. I mean, I've been involved for almost twelve years, and this is just a very different, weird move, you know. And me, just selfishly speaking, I'm I don't like change. I like things that are very predictable. I'm like pretty organized as far as my routines and how we plan for our program and our athletes, et cetera, et cetera. So I really do think it's just weird, you know? Yeah. I, I don't disagree. I think, I think there's a lot of strangeness, um, to how all of this has, has come about. Uh, I think there's also maybe because of the people involved and because of how the, like the perception is of it. I think it's really easy to see it as kind of like a, well, I mean, there's just no real clarity into the motivations behind a lot of this stuff. Obviously, there's what CrossFit's telling us about pushing into like the global side of things and and focusing on CrossFit health. Um, but who knows? You know, I mean, there's there's so many moving parts. It's hard to see whether or not that's that's the main driving factor for sure. But if you know, like, w- what would it take for this thing to feel normal? Because we we all know this first season is going to be pretty fucked like it's going to be really yeah. weird no one's going to have a real idea about how it's going to go no, there's no real clarity on how it's going to be covered no one really knows so like outside of the dry run that is the 2019 season what's it going to take for it to feel okay again yeah so i really look at things again to say it is is selfishly um and I want to look at what is going to benefit my number one is my gym. And what I mean is like these four walls inside of my gym. Number two is my remote and competitive program and the athletes that I coach. I don't refer to my clients here in the gym as, as my athletes. I think that like the relationship that clients and athletes have with competitive stuff is very different. So I, you know, we, we, we treat them very differently. Um, and look, from my perspective, uh, I don't right now, I, I, I I don't have a, a Noah Olson that, that I coach. I don't, you know, I have been coaching Brenda Castro for the last five years. We just made it to the games for the first time. Um, she finished better than any Latino male or female has ever finished. And I think she proved that she does belong there. Um, but I don't have someone that has the budget or the sponsorships to travel around competing at a bunch of different sanctioned events. You know what I mean? Um, 
secondly, I have my 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 team uh, who's finished the two times we've gone to the CrossFit Games, top ten both times. Uh, we won our region both times. They're a very competitive, very talented, very dedicated team of men and women who honestly this change for them really sucks. So again, selfishly speaking, that's kind of that's really where my feelings were a bit sour on. Also, you know, to come to the gym and to have my team meetings with my competitors and to talk to some of my remote folks online and they're like, "Man, my, my life's goal was to just make it to fucking regionals." And some of them, we've helped them reach that goal. And the stars really had to align to make it to regionals. And it didn't even matter if they finished last. Right. As, like their Olympics, their CrossFit Games, as good as it got for some of these folks, was realistically making it to regionals. And to take that away and, in my opinion, to not really like have the answer for it or the equivalent for it is tough. You know? Um, and... It's my job as their head coach to keep them motivated and to keep them focused. But I'll give you an example. We, we were just sitting in a meeting here, um, you know, and we have Wadapalooza. I, I work with that team now. I'm the competition director for Wadapalooza. And we're starting to look at what's the next step after Wadapalooza. I texted you to ask you for that, that like, detailed list of events. And I don't even know what it means. I don't know who's going to have an online qualifier or not. I don't know how many spots there's going to go for what. I don't know if there's other divisions or not. It's it's a lot of questions that I don't have the answers for. And in order to be effective at my job as their leader, their coach, and their programmer, I need to have answers, and I don't. And for me, that's just annoying. Sure. Know? Yeah, I think I think the the communication has been lacking for sure because. Uh, you know, I'm not in, I'm not under any pretenses about sort of how big my footprint is in this space. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I, I'm, I do okay. I try and cover things the best I can. I try and simplify and communicate things the best I can, but CrossFit reaches millions of people and I reach thousands, right? There's a huge difference yeah. there. And the fact that I think a lot of people are like, oh, I can't wait for CrossFit to say something official. I don't think it's necessarily, it's annoying. That's such a, that's such kind of like a, a weird, lame kind of cop out thing to like be waiting for. But what I think they actually mean is we just want to have like Rory McKernan or, you know, Dave Castro come out and say, hey, this is what this is now going right. to look like, you know. And then lay it out in a simple way. Just even the same words that I put out there. I think people just want to have that comfort. You know, you're you're right. Change is good, but it definitely messes people up when it's uh, it's like a big 180. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Um, you know. Uh, look, I will say this: is that I I do think that there's a lot of potential upside for some of our competitors in this model. I think for someone like Brenda, this should be a very good change. I think that in 2020, 2021, 2022, et cetera, et cetera, there's potential for people to make uh, a viable career out of doing CrossFit competitively, which for many people that has not been an option now. You know, so I'm I'm really stoked on on that. I just Look, I got to call a spade a spade. I'm okay with change. Look, I've, I've traveled to regionals since 2011, 2012, and I've seen the regionals that have very poor attendance. I get that some of those things might have been a money pit, and I understand that you know these guys had to make a business decision. I get that they want to change the direction more towards CrossFit Health. I'm actually very pro that. We're not just a competitive gym. Our 99% is like the heartbeat and who pays the bills in our program. So I totally understand that. Um, again, I, I, the communication is it's just different. Here's what's funny, though. I, I, my first team meeting after all of these changes were first announced um, through very informal means. I had to give a lot of my guys like a CrossFit history lesson. We sometimes like operate in like my program under the assumption that like these young men and women 
have been doing, and, and even like some of my master's athletes have been doing CrossFit just as long or close to as long as I have. Right. And dude, they like, I've got people that are like two years in <laughs> and sometimes I talk to them like they're fucking OGs just cause they spend eight hours a day in the gym. I really lose perspective sometimes, you know, and, and I had to give them the, the CrossFit history lesson and tell them like, look, uh, Glassman has been really hyper focused on other things for the last several years. But to be honest with you, this is very consistent with the Glassman we knew to to learn and appreciate from 2007 and 2008 and 9, 10, 11, 12. And HQ used to go on like, you know, they would fight with Reebok via Twitter yeah, in the early did. days of the park. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, uh, H CrossFit has always hung their hat on like the unknown and unknowable and as corny as it sounds. And, and sometimes it's frustrating from like the, the business owner's perspective, but that that's what this is for right or for wrong. And, and, and when we choose to play their sport, because that's what CrossFit is, it's their sport. When we choose to affiliate with them, we have to understand that we are playing their unknown and unknowable model and sport. For sure. I mean, you know? listen, over my left shoulder, and there's I have a poster of Miko just hanging out there. And it's like, yeah, man, like there's a lot of fucking people that don't know who he is or what he means to the sport or how he affected our training. And, you know, there's there's uh, a lack of perspective. I think that's that's a really good way of describing it. And I think that's that's one of the reasons why I, I wanted to have this conversation with you is because you have a very interesting like uh, mix of pers- of perspectives on everything that's going on in CrossFit as a business, CrossFit as a sport, CrossFit as a gym a model, CrossFit as, you know, a marketplace for other businesses. And, you know, after just to kind of run down sort of the, the various things that you've done, it's like you own a really successful CrossFit gym, Soul, in in Miami. You have coached teams to the top 10. You've coached an individual at the CrossFit Games. You have participated in like the business side of things for uh, Progenics, right? One of the largest supplement companies in the space, uh, specifically mm-hmm. in one of the biggest growing markets, South America. You have like relationships with uh, athletes and coaches and developing these these athletes and coaches over the the history of your gym so it's like having been in this space in so many different ways and for so long i think your take on things is is going to be really unique and really interesting and you know from a gym owner's perspective one of the things that i remember feeling and I imagine is pretty common is we as affiliate owners weren't really ever supported by HQ um, in any like tangible way. I get it like protecting the brand and making sure that, you know, CrossFit as a trademark isn't watered down. Those are very important things, but the tangible, like one of my coaches leaves opens up a gym next door. That shit was never protected or, you know, even frowned upon in any real way from HQ. So as an affiliate owner, I'm curious, how do you think this is going to affect you if it's going to affect you at all? So I do think it is going to affect us. Again, we were just, uh, you know, we plan quarterly for what is coming up competitive, competitively for our athletes, but also we use some competitive elements to help support our community as well. And the top two community building events we have yearly have always been, and this is before my involvement with Wadapalooza, but there's a Wadapalooza online qualifier feeding into Wadapalooza. It's a local event. I mean, we have very strong attendance there. Three years in a row, we've had the strongest online qualifying attendance or or, uh, participation rather. And then secondly is the Open. Uh, And we've used the Open as a tool to kind of bridge the gap and to help like the competitors have a strong relationship with the general population so much so that like our competitors will judge and will help motivate and, and, and coach, uh, assist the, the general population. Um, I don't know what that's going to look like now. I don't know that, that my competitors like the open is a great community builder. If you do it well, and if enough people have buy-in, 
My 4.30 p.m. guys have to have buy-in to the open to keep them motivated to do it. And that might be just as much as seeing their improvement incrementally on the leaderboard and they're beating their homies, right? Um, for competitors, look, I, this I, I, I don't want to, again, sound like the, the pessimist, but the open fucking yeah. sucks. It is emotionally draining. There's tears men and women up the ass like it is just it is very emotionally draining time of year for people who put yeah. in a lot of time to training you know um and if they don't have some kind of buy-in and if there's not some something to bridge the gap that's keeping them focused to want to do the open these folks don't have a good relationship with it and i've heard time and time again many people say I'm not doing it or I'm stoked that I don't have to do this anymore. You know? Um, so that is one area that, that, that is concerning and scary for me is, is we're going to have a thinner community participation as a result of this, because that thing like really bridges the gap for us. And we, and we hang our hat on that. That's number one is, is a concern of mine. Number two, um, I'm all about the CrossFit health initiative. I think it's very important. I think, and, and, and we're a part of this problem too, or we have been in the past where everyone wants to promote what's like sexy and cool, which is people in fucking sports bras doing handstand walks and people doing ring handstand pushups that have 5% body fat. And like, that is like what really stands out and what's get what gets promoted by many programs and from uh, CrossFit HQ in previous years. Um, so I think like refocusing the brand to focus on CrossFit health, I think is awesome. I wish I would know how that's going to happen because I can't, I, I, I look, my, I need to like touch it in order for me to believe it. I need to see it happen and the track record of saying things like this from HQ sometimes has, has really not been the best. So CrossFit Health sounds like a great idea. How is that going to change my gym? Uh, I, to this day, I, with the exception of me reaching out to and grabbing some people that are very close to me that are fighting chronic disease and obesity, et cetera, et cetera, I've never had someone – with that kind of disease and big problems like that, walk into the door of my gym. And it's not because they're not welcome, because they absolutely are. Like I said, the 99% is what pays our bills, and that's really what we focus on. I think people have like a skewed view of soul sometimes. They like see we're very heavily tattooed, and we listen to aggressive music, and we, and we have competitors, and it's just like a, you know, for badasses. And that's absolutely not the case. We'll tell someone to walk out the door if, if that's what their sole focus is. Um, but I've never had someone with chronic disease come to the door and ask for help. And I, and I want to know what HQ is going to do to make that happen because we're ready and willing. Uh, but I think there needs to be some support yeah. in that way for sure. So cross the health sounds dope, but I don't know like what, yeah, that I think, really looks I think like, you know, they're, they're keeping their cards close to their, their chest on this one. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really, I don't have any secret insights into how that process is going to work. Um, you know, I, I wish I knew, uh, you based off of sort of some of the conversations I've had with the people involved there, it seems like there's a lot of moving parts and, and like everything else that CrossFit has involved themselves in, it's very much like a, well, we understand that we're generally moving in this direction. So let's just, let's just fucking go. And if we have to make a bunch of like left turns, right turns along <laughs> the way, fuck it. We'll figure it out as we're, as we're going. And I think that's really what's happening because even the weekend that I was at HQ talking to them specifically about CrossFit health, like that is what they brought me there to talk to them about. Even that weekend over the course of two days, the, the scope of what CrossFit health was supposed to be changed dramatically among the conversations I was having. It went from like, we're trying to educate uh, doctors so that, 
you know, they, they have a, a, a better idea that CrossFit isn't going to kill people and that it's actually really good for people and that, you know, we can, we can help solve some of these problems without prescribing medicine to like, let's topple the healthcare industry. And I was like, holy shit, guys, like there's, there's a bit, I mean, maybe those things are connected and, and arguably they are, but there's a big gap. There's a, there's a grand Canyon sized gap between those yeah. things. And it's like, maybe Greg Glassman's evil Knievel, you know what I mean? Maybe he's going to jump that thing, but who who knows? There there isn't really any any insight there into exactly how that's gonna how it's gonna pan out. And it's like I don't know. Maybe there's the uh, there's like the the huge end result being healthcare systems completely flipped up. The MDs all sort of recommend functional movements and at high intensity and like you know uh, eat meat seeds, nuts, vegetables to people. And, and that drives people into the CrossFit gyms and like insurance gets cheaper because everyone's healthier and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe that's, maybe that's the goal, but you, you knew, you know, as well as I do, the gym industry is tough and that it is a very thin mm-hmm. line between having your doors open now and having your doors open six months from now. And, uh, you know, it's like, is that plan going to take a year? Is that plan going to take 25 years? Who knows? There, there's no, there's no idea there. There's no communication there. Um, but as far as, you know, as far as the, the marketplace of CrossFit as like a, 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 a space, you know, the, the number keeps going thrown around that it's created a $4 billion industry. I'm, I'm assuming that includes HQ, and all the other businesses that have blown up because of how popular CrossFit has become, they might even be fucking including Reebok in that number at this point. Like, cause if it wasn't for CrossFit and the games, then you know, who knows where Reebok would be. But as far as that marketplace goes for, um, you know, businesses, how do you think that this is going to affect that? How do you see that, you know, having, having sort of a, a moving the needle when it comes to that, that market? I think it could and should have a positive impact on the sponsorship and business space. I think that previous HQ sanctioned events, there was very limited shine for certain brands. And, you know, I personally have, have talked to companies, brands, owners, marketers, who don't want to touch certain events because they're like, why am I going to pay all this money if I'm not, if I don't have an opportunity to be that guy in that brand. And I think that I actually really like Greg's affiliate model in this way. And what seems, what they seem to be using for the sanctioning model, which is figure it out. And if you're able to be successful, you're going to be successful. And if you can't, there's going to be other people behind you that will take over. We're again, in our meeting, we were just saying like, yeah, there's 16 events now. There'll be, it might be 16 events next year, but oh, yeah. probably half of them sure. will look very different, you know? Um, and dude, markets like China, where there's brands that you and I haven't even heard of, CrossFit sneaker companies and supplement companies and CBD is like the new thing everywhere. Like there's so much more money in the space. And now these athletes and brands and events, you can like touch them as we were before they were mostly hands off by many people. Um, I think that creates way more opportunities for athletes and brands to, to be successful for sure. I, I, that's really interesting point about, about China. I, so the, the China thing got announced and, uh, I was like, man, I don't know anything about, affiliates in China, the community. I don't know anything about it. It's like, it's literally a closed off, space like i generally understand how things are going in europe south america australia even africa i i kind of have a a feel for that china was like a huge unknown and then someone uh made it made a point that the reason why i've never heard of these events the reason why i've never heard of these athletes is because our social media exposure our platforms are completely different so they use god what's it called weibo or whatever or other, like they basically have like Mm -hmm. China versions of like Twitter and Instagram. And that's where all that shit lives. And they're gigantic, huge. I mean, 
<laughs> They're bigger than anything it here, dude. It makes no sense. And I was like, how is it possible that me, someone whose job it is to be connected to this sort of thing, had no idea that these things existed? And it's entirely because there's literally this gigantic space between us that nobody has been able to bridge. CrossFit is bridging it. They're sending people out there. They have a they have their yeah. their finger on the pulse. They have a, a specific division in their in their business about you know there, there's like a, a the head of CrossFit China or whatever. Um, but it, it's really fascinating to me that that you know people I think uh, we get a little myopic right. We think about the affiliates in the U.S. It's like yeah, there's thousands of affiliates in the U S and maybe the rate of affiliates growing in the U S is like plateaued. And I think that's pretty, you know, that's a, that's a pretty obvious statement. Um, but there's places like China where it is absolutely booming. It's booming in a way that it was here in 2010, 2011, 2012. Um, so I, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. very curious to see how the international aspect of things, you know, pans out. Um, just to wrap up for you, what do you think is, is, you know, what, what's the thing that excites you the most, uh, about, you know, what, what is upcoming? So I'm, I, I feel like on this interview, I've sounded like a huge hater (laughs) and and I want to get the point across that, that I'm not, I, I am a look in the era of, of people speaking poorly about CrossFit and CrossFit competition and how competitors will destroy your gym. And, you know, for a while it became trendy to pull the name CrossFit off of your program and your gym. We have very proudly waved the CrossFit flag in a big way. And we've never, uh, we we never even considered doing all of that, that a lot of these self-proclaimed CrossFit business experts have recommended that people do. I feel like it's very important that we do the best version of CrossFit that we can to educate people on like the soul system and the soul way of doing fitness, which is CrossFit. Um, And I'm a big believer in Greg Glassman. He's one of the best speakers and motivators I've ever heard. And without like it, this dude, CrossFit is the only thing I know how to do. Okay. And if it wasn't for this, I don't know what I'd be doing. Um, so this needs to work for yeah. me. Okay. That's, that's like how I, I treat this because I have, you know, I, I dabbled in psychology and drug counseling and some things and I, and I've had other gigs in the past, but this is really the only thing I've ever done well. Um, so I am not, in any way, shape, or form, an HQ hater or shit talker in any way. I'm very appreciative for everything that they've done, and I speak very highly of them. But when things start to impact my business model, and I have clients that are coming saying, oh, you know, due to this, I don't have the motivation, and I'm not sure the direction of this and that, uh, it definitely hits me in a sore spot, and I've always been the type to speak my mind about it, you know? Um, So... To answer your question, I'm very hopeful about opportunity. I hope that this thing is done the right way. I hope that all of these events don't only reward and acknowledge elites. I hope that there's opportunities for my developing people to be involved and compete the same way they did in the early days of regionals, et cetera, et cetera. I hope that more opportunities are created for Everyone across the board, not just the current sponsored athletes that are bringing in six figures. I want developing people to have opportunities. Um, I am hopeful and, and, and want HQ to finally release their CrossFit Health Initiative plan. And I hope that that helps bring more people to these doors that we can help and we can act um, as as a part of the solution, not the problem. That's what I'm ultimately hopeful for. But honestly, all those things are a big question mark and I'm just waiting to see the answers for everything, you know? Yeah, of course. Well, Danny, I appreciate you taking the time, man. If uh, Sorry, if people... I, I lost you there. You still here? Can you see me? Yeah, I lost you for a second. Oh. Yeah, I can see you. Uh, I was saying, uh, I appreciate you taking the time and, uh, and, and talking to me 
if uh, if people want to sort of like get a hold of you or follow you, how's the best way they can do that? Um, on Instagram, all of our socials are are at Team Soul, so that's the best way to follow us. Uh, mine is at Danny X Soul. But if you want to reach out to me directly, you have questions on programming, my thoughts on stuff, the gym, competitive stuff, not so competitive stuff. You know, you want to talk about how much I think tool sucks. Come on. Whatever it is, you can can, can email me at uh, Danny at CrossFit Soul Miami dot com. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, um, I've got a question for you. Is the new tool record going to come out first or is CrossFit going to finally announce details of all these sanctioned events? Ooh, <laughs> I think, think, I think the, I think the CrossFit rule book is going to come out before, before <laughs> the tools the next album comes out. Yeah. I think, I think it's going to be, I think it's still going to be a minute before. I think it's very likely that the CrossFit games in 2019 happened before tools next album comes out. <laughs> It's very, very fucking likely. It's unfortunate, but it's very likely. Yeah. Unfortunate for you, I guess. Yeah, man. Whatever, dude. Just because you're you're like a, a punk rock hater. Whatever, dude. That's fine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm not like I'm not edgy enough. I'm not new metal enough for you. It's just too deep, bro. You can't you can't handle it. <laughs> You've got guys on your podcast that listen to good music. Uh when your boys wears that full of hell shirt, those are homies. Yeah, yeah. They're. I mean, they've got they've got pretty good taste in music. That that metal. They live that metal life. Did I lose you? You still there? Reconnecting. Yo. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what happened. Reconnecting. Yo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see you. I can hear you. All right, good. Well. Anyway, next, you know what? When the new Tool album does come out, you and I are going to do a little like review together, okay? And I expect you to I be will. fucking nice, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Good talking to you. All right, dude. Likewise, man. Later. Later. <laughs>